Hi, I'm Paul Holtz, and once again, welcome to Class on Demand. Uh, today, we're going to show you some really, really cool, simple effects called flash frames. Uh, in the last month or two, I have had at least 50 or 60 people say, how do I simply use a flash frame or create one? Um, and when you see how easy it is, you're going to wonder why you didn't think of it yourself. And flash frames are a very commonly thing used in photo montages where you have flash frames that emulate uh, the flash of a camera going off. Uh, between stills as well as videos. You know, it depends on what you're using it for. Uh, the other thing that we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to actually add a shutter sound, uh, the clicking shutter of a camera. So um, the first thing that we're going to do is show you what we're going to do today, uh, which is right here, and then I'm going to show you how to do it. Here we go. And now we're just fading it out here at the end. So once again, all we have is, and we're going to just start right over here. Uh, what we've got is we've just got a series of stills. This could be a combination of stills and videos. Uh, but you can see that I've got a little bit of quick movement in here. Okay, I didn't use the normal pan and scan because pan and scan um, in this particular case doesn't give me any rotations. But I do have very short keyframes on this to give my picture a little bit of movement at the very beginning where the flash is going to happen. And then it settles in so it establishes the shot. And then I do that on all of them. Let's just go ahead and play these. You can see there's a little rotation in there, a little movement, kind of cool. You can do these however you want, but now what we're going to do is every time that those cut, we're actually going to add a flash frame. What is a flash frame? You know what it is? It's nothing more than a piece of white, okay? And you can see that we've got a little white frame right here that we're going to drop right on the top. All I want you to do is if you don't have it, is just go under uh, your photos, um, you can go under Photos All and just type in white. And for all you Avid and Pinnacle Studio people, you'll have a little white graphic that come up. Uh, I want to remind you guys today that this technique will work on every piece of software out there. Final Cut Studio, uh, Media Composer, it'll work on uh, Vegas or uh, Adobe Premiere. This technique I've been using 20, 20 years, and it's very simple and still very effective, and you use it every day. So um, once again, all I want you to do is find that white graphic. If you don't have a white graphic, go into your title editor and just create uh, you know, a white background. Just don't have any text. Just create a pure white background, save it, and then you can use it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to drag this over here, and we're going to drag this right over the top. Now, the default is probably three seconds, which is in our setup. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this a little bit uh, because what I want is I want these to be very short. That's what these are up here. And what I have found is if you go in and adjust duration, what we're going to do here is we're going to type in 00, zero and we're going to make this six frames here. Six frames seems to be pretty good. Now remember, you're seeing a flash bulb go off, right? So if it's very short, it means it's not a very hot flash. Now that could be what you want, but if you want a really hot flash, you can even make this maybe eight frames or ten frames long, okay? Because then after we're done with that, you see we've got it very short here. What we're going to do is let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit so you can see this. And all we're going to do is we're going to drag the corner to create a dissolve or a fade, okay? And you'll see that when we go over the top of this, the very first frame, you can see because of the visual that it's purely opaque. It's pure white, and then it's going to take six frames to dissolve out, okay? And that's your flash. It's real simple. See how that looks? So the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to go into our sound effects and we're going to grab our shutter sound, okay? So if you go under sound effects and type in shutter, you'll see camera shutter pop up, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to drop that right underneath and you can kind of see visually on the wave here where that actually starts, okay? So let's go ahead and see how this looks. Kind of cool. Let's try that again, see how close that is. All right, great. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim this first part out of here. Good. 
And then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to trim it after the motor stops. Listen for the how the motor stops as it's theoretically rotating the film. There's where the motor stops right there. So we're going to go ahead and trim that right there, okay? So now what we have is we've got a flash frame with a sound effect. Looks pretty cool. So now what I'm going to do is show you a very cool editing tip that you can apply this to all of these photos very, very quickly instead of having to recreate this over and over. So what I want you to do is click and select the flash frame, the white frame up at the top, hold down control, and then click on the shutter sound effect and you'll see that they both have a little yellow square around them. It means they're both selected. Now what I want you to do is right click and what I want you to do is copy it, okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to find the edit point or this cut point right here. And the way that Studio works and many, many other editing programs is just to use your page up and page down. And what that'll do is it'll, uh, it'll move your play bar. You can see that it's moving to the next cut point or the next end point of a clip. So if we keep going page down, it'll eventually get to this next cut point. And then what I want you to do, since we've copied... Uh, our our uh, two graph our graphic and our shutter effect here or sound effect. What we do is when we hit Control V, that's going to paste it right exactly at that cut point, and there you go. So it's perfectly aligned. You don't have to line it up because it's right on the cut point, which is identical to what we had at the beginning. So now let's go ahead, go page down again, page down, page down, find that next cut point, and what are you going to do? Control V for paste. Let's do it again. Con Page down, page down. There we go. Control V. Let's do it again here on this last one. Control V. And let's see if we got any more here. Yep, we got one more cut. Control V. And once again, that's just page down. And now I've got all of my flash frames and effects. And here we go. How cool is that? Very, very cool. And then at the very end, you could do a dissolve out or whatever. But that's how you do very simple flash frames. Once again, if you want hotter flashes, just make these like eight frames long instead of six. Your dissolve will be longer, which means that it's going to take longer and emulate like when the iris in your eye is recovering from a flash frame. Because remember, that that uh, that dissolve is kind of emulating how your eyes readjust after that flash frame. If you like these videos, join our YouTube channel, our Class On Demand YouTube channel, which is probably where you're seeing this video. You could also be seeing us on Facebook. So what I'd like you to do is go to Facebook and like us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash class on demand, and then go like us. And then make sure that we show up in your news feed by clicking on the like button and selecting that as well. That way, every time we add something cool and it happens all the time to our Facebook page, you'll get an update on that. And lastly, if you really like this, go purchase the complete training for Pinnacle Studio 16 or any of our other products on classondemand.com. We go into great depth and detail. And if you think this stuff was cool, wait till you get into the complete training. It's unbelievable. You're going to learn how to edit just like the pros do. Make sure you let us know how you like this stuff. I'm Paul Holtz from Class on Demand. Have a great day.